Hey, I'm Simon Coombs. I'm Snowflake's Director of Data Science for Professional Services. In this demo, we'll be using Snowpark Python to create a sentiment analysis model and then scoring this against unstructured data. Let's get started. Okay, so our agenda for this demo is first we're going to run through and look at the features that we'll be using to build out the pipeline. Then we'll be looking at the architecture and what does the pipeline look like and how does it all tie together? We're going to run through a notebook example of creating and executing this pipeline. And then coming back to the architecture, we'll look at how we could then automate this pipeline moving forward in a production environment. And finally, we'll look at a summary of what we did and then the benefits of this particular approach. So these are the features that we'll be using today. First of all, unstructured data. And by that, we mean storage of unstructured data within a Snowflake stage. And we'll be using directory tables to query that. Additionally, we'll be creating stage file URLs. And these are scoped URLs that will allow us access to authenticated users and sessions. And then finally, dynamic file access within a Python UDF where we can actually pass the unstructured data. Then we'll be looking at the Snowpark API. This is a client-side library currently in Python, Java, and Scala, and this allows for programmatic access into Snowflake. It gives us the ability to push execution into Snowflake Compute, but it also allows us for the registration of UDFs, stored procedures, and any repeatable code execution that we want to execute within the Snowflake Compute environment. And then finally, using Python for all of this. So this will be server-side execution of the Python code. We'll be using libraries from Anaconda, We'll be registering UDFs and stored procedures, which will allow us repeatable code execution. And we'll be looking at scalar and vectorized UDFs as well. Okay, so this is our proposed architecture. First stage of this will be model training, and we'll be using pre-classified data to train a model. This will be executed within Snowflake using a stored procedure. The data will be queried via Snowpark, and it will be processed with an ML library, most likely scikit-learn or potentially XGBoost. Next, we'll be processing the text. And so we'll be utilizing Spacey within a Python UDF. And we're going to process the text to remove things like stop words, punctuation, and also apply lemmatization. The results are then stored in a table that can be used for model retraining in the future and also scoring. And the next stage of this will be then reading unstructured files. So we'll query the directory table with a Python UDF using authorized stage file URLs. The UDF is able to read the content of the files and output this into a structured format for future use. Finally, we're gonna score that data. So the process data is queried against a vectorized UDF containing the trained model to score the data. This data is persisted to a new table and that can then be used for reporting or follow on workflows or actions. On to the demo. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to my notebook demo. First thing I'm going to do in my notebook is import all the libraries that I'll be using throughout this demo. And then I'm going to establish my connection to Snowflake and build my Snowpark session. In this step, I'm just going to create some artifacts that will be needed throughout the demo, stage objects, and I'm also going to put in some files that will be utilized at various different stages by some of the UDFs. So now I'm going to get onto the data prep where we're going to get the data ready for model training. First thing I want to do is actually take a look at my training data. So I can see here, I have several rows of reviews. These reviews contain product ID, the review date, the actual review text, which is going to be driving our sentiment analysis, and then a pre-classified sentiment value as well. Sentiment values will either be positive, negative, or in some cases, neutral as well. Now I want to just take the distribution of my data. I want to see how many positive reviews, negative reviews, and neutral reviews I have. So I'll make sure I've got a fairly balanced set of data. So I can see here, I've got around 50,000 negative reviews, just under 50,000 positive, and just under 40,000 neutral reviews here. So that's a fairly good distribution of data. Okay, next I'm going to create a vectorized UDF. This is vectorized so we can take advantage of batch processing within the UDF. And we can additionally cache the stop work lexicon for better performance as well. So now we can see how this can be used against text. So I can execute that UDF against a sentence and see the outcome that will be processed. So we can see here my sentence that was passed through had punctuation, it had periods, had some currency values in. And the output of this is a much more normalized sentence that can be then used for a model training. 
The next transformation we're going to do is convert the string value for sentiment into a numeric value. So it's optimized for our ML algorithm. And we can do this using a very simple UDF to convert the sentiment string into a value. So with these UDFs, we can now run a query against the data and see what it looks like for training. So we can now see we have product ID, review date, review text, which has now been processed and in a much better shape for model training. And then finally, we have a sentiment value where we've taken the string value and then converted it into an integer. Next, we're going to move on to the model training. Model training is going to be done using a Python store procedure. Uh, the benefit here is it allows us to rerun this whenever we want to retrain the model. So the model is going to be saved to an internal stage, and then it can be reused into a UDF for inference going forward. The store procedure is going to carry out all the steps necessary for model training. So we're going to use Snowpark to pull a data frame into memory. And we're going to go through the, the basic steps of model training. We're going to split our data into train and test. We're going to go through a process of vectorizing the data in order to prepare it, split the data so that we have features and then a label, and then run a multinomial logistic regression model that then, that is then going to output our model. And we'll then just run that predictions against our test data set. That model output will then be placed into an internal stage, and we can then register a UDF in order to use that for future inference. So this is then going to create the stored procedure. And once this is done, I can then execute this function here, which is then going to call the stored procedure and go through the model training process. So I can see my stored procedure is now registered. And once I execute this, this is then going to go away and do the full training process. Okay, our stored procedure is finished and our model is now trained. That took roughly 11 minutes and has yielded an accuracy of around 71%, which is good to work with. Now we're going to deploy that model into a UDF so that it can then be used for scoring and inference uh, from Snowpark and from inside Snowflake. And then once this has been registered, I'm going to just do a quick test with a simple SQL call using the session.sql command. And so I can see here, sending through a sentence like practically perfect in every way, this has come back with an 81% positive sentiment, 10% neutral, and about 8% negative. So I can see here that my model is working pretty effectively on a very simple sentence like this. Now I'm going to move on to ingesting new data. And so I have an unstructured data file residing in a snowflake stage, and I need to be able to read that data and then prepare that ready for scoring against my model. In order to do that, I'm going to create a UDTF this time. And within that UDTF, I'm going to use a library that will actually allow me to open files on the stage. So first I'm going to register this UDTF. Okay, my UDTF is now registered. And so I'm going to use that shortly to then read the data that's within those files. Next, I'm just going to take a quick look at a directory table. And the directory table is a table that essentially runs on top of a stage object. And it's going to give me stage URLs that I'll be able to pass to my UDTF. This is how the stage file will look. So I have my file name and then a respective URL, which is scoped to my Snowflake session. What I can do is I can then call a query that's going to select my file, and then it's going to extrapolate product IDs, review dates, and product reviews from this file. And that's utilizing my UDTF function that I just registered previously, where I'm passing the file URL through. And so I can see here from the file, I've extracted a whole new set of fresh review data that I can now use to start scoring. I'm going to take the data frame that was generated from this statement here, and I'm going to save this to a temporary table called new reviews raw. With that new table, what I can then do is pull through various different columns and also call my function to remove stop words and other punctuation. I'm going to then save that into a new temporary table called new reviews ready. 
Okay, in my final step, I'm gonna take my new reviews ready table. I'm gonna pull that into a data frame, selecting the necessary columns and also calling my sentiment analysis function as well at the same time. And the output of this will be aliased as a new column called sentiment. Before I save that as a permanent table, I'm then just gonna take out the key values from that sentiment column and save them in their own respective columns, each called negative, neutral, and positive. And then this will be saved as its own table, as a permanent table called new review scored. In the final step, I'm then just selecting the new review scored table. So I can then take a quick look at the output of my model execution. And I can see here, I've got my product IDs that were imported from the unstructured data file with their respective review dates, the product reviews, and then what my model thinks the respective positive, neutral, and negative elements are. And with my scored data, I could then push this into any form of visualization tool. In this example here, I've written a very basic Streamlit app that allows me to select a product, select a year, and then visualize the information relating to the sentiment over that period. I can simply move between years, and my app will then refresh, showing me the number of reviews for that period, what the average positive sentiment was, the average neutral, and the average negative. And we can also bring other elements into the chart as well, things like word clouds or donut charts showing the distribution of the various different words. So if we go back to my original architecture diagram, we can see here the work we've done. We've taken the training data, we've put that into model training, and we've created a sentiment analysis UDF. We've ingested unstructured data from an object store. We've pulled that into a structured table. We've removed the punctuation stop words, and then we've taken that data and scored that against our model and saved that in a persistent table, which we were then able to visualize. If we wanted to go ahead and automate this, it would look something like this. We could have a training task that would then rerun the training periodically, depending on whatever cadence you'd preferred. We could have streams and tasks that would be running on the directory table that would automate the ingest of new files as they landed in my stage. Um, I would then have streams and tasks running on top of that structured table to then remove the punctuation and stop words. And then finally, uh, another set of streams and tasks that could then take that data that's ready to be scored, execute that against my model and push that into my scored data, thus automating the entire ecosystem. So in summary, we've demonstrated some of the new features of Snowflake for ML pipelines. We accessed unstructured data using Python. We did model training using Snowflake Compute. We deployed a UDF with a trained model and we demonstrated batch scoring. We then talked about automation of the pipeline, end-to-end -end pipeline running entirely in Snowflake, leveraging streams and tasks so we could automate every step along the way. And what's really cool is we executed all of this inside Snowflake. We leveraged Snowflake's elastic compute, and there was no data movement outside Snowflake for model training or inference. If this was useful for you and you got something out of it, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to try this out for yourself, please check out Snowflake Lab's GitHub account, where we have a Snowpark Python repo containing all of today's code. Thanks for watching. Hello, we've got a breaking news alert. Now bear with me as we don't quite understand what's going on as of yet. Our Channel 8 News team is being bombarded by reports of what people are calling data superheroes. Here's what we know so far. Multiple individuals have been spotted all over the globe doing what can only be described as saving our data. We have this clip submitted to us by Felipe Hava, and it seems to show a figure flying in and doing something incredible to the old industrial mill on 53rd Avenue. That is simply amazing. Now joining us live on the scene is Elsa Mayer. Elsa, give us an idea of what's going on over there. Thanks, Leigh. I'm here downtown where moments ago, two individuals were spotted lifting, rising up alongside this building here. This is truly unbelievable. If it weren't for the footage captured by Daniel Myers, I wouldn't believe it myself. Leigh, back to you. Thanks, Elsa. Stay safe out there. Here now is some footage coming out of Amsterdam of what seems to be a person holding back a tsunami of data. I'm not sure what's even going on here. Adding to all of this, cities around the world are starting to see this symbol pop up 
What does it mean? Who are these people? It looks like these data superheroes are somehow saving our data. I'm not sure what's going on, but I can tell you this. I'm sure glad they're on our side. For Channel 8 News, this is Leith Derausha signing off.